When we are introduced to the character Koichi Hirose in the very beginning of Diamond is Unbreakable, we see a character nervously walking down the street on his way to his first day of high school. Caught up in his own head with concerns like wondering what the people are going to be like at his new school and not even realizing where he was walking. And he just so happened to bump into Jotaro Kujo who had just arrived in Morio and decided to ask the startled Koichi some questions. And from that point on, Koichi's life would take a bit of a bizarre turn. The first impression of Koichi's character shows us that he comes off as a timid teenager a little short for his age. And even as Koichi narrates his own introduction, it gives us a look at his lack of self-confidence and feeling of insignificance. As he says that we won't really even need to remember his name, even though he is an extremely important character throughout the entire part. But if we skip forward and take a look at Koichi's character in the final moments of Diamond is Unbreakable, we see a character who is standing proud alongside all of the friends he has made, ready to bring peace to his town once again, no longer frozen in fear, but rather using his newfound self-confidence and ever-evolving stand echoes to be the one who leaves people frozen in his presence, even the Morio serial killer. Koichi was there alongside all of his friends, ready to strike at the exact moment Morio needed him and his ability most. It was Koichi who was able to stop Kira from activating his third bomb for the last time, when no one else could. But how did Koichi become the person that he is today, the hero that Morio needed? Hello everyone, and welcome to the evolution of Koichi Hirose and his stand echoes. The first major change in Koichi's character was when he became a stand user. But Koichi's method of obtaining a stand was actually a bit more unique than it might seem. So as we all know, there are quite a few different ways one becomes a stand user, but like most characters from part four, Koichi got his stand by being pierced by the stand arrow. When using the stand arrow, it's as simple as once you're pierced by the arrow, you will develop a stand if you have the mental strength and a strong enough fighting spirit to possess one. But if you don't, you'll die if the arrow wound was fatal. But when it comes to Koichi, he didn't have the mental strength or a strong enough fighting spirit to possess a stand, and he was going to die from his wound if it wasn't for Josuke and his crazy diamond's restoration ability. So because Koichi was healed and able to survive the stand wound, but at the same time not being able to develop a stand, this made him a truly unique stand user, as I believe this is the reason for his stand being able to evolve alongside him as a character. He didn't develop a stand when stabbed due to his current mental state, but yet didn't die and these are the circumstances that created an evolving stand. Or it's just because Echoes by Pink Floyd, the stand's musical reference, is a three-act song and Araki wanted to be clever, but Let's just ignore that and stick to my theory. The first time we see Koichi use his stand ability is actually very shortly after being healed by Josuke. And the first time we see what I will refer to as Echo's Act Zero is a perfect representation of Koichi's fighting spirit, non-existent. When Koichi is demanded to bring out his stand by Keicho, Josuke tells him that it's just instinct and that a stand that's unique to your mentality should come out. And what comes out of Koichi is an egg, just an egg that doesn't do anything, much like Koichi in the Nijimura Brothers arc. So although Koichi is in fact a stand user, his stand is only as powerful as his fighting spirit as we see Koichi encounter different stand users and experience different emotions, we see more of his fighting spirit come out and in turn, an evolution of his stand. The first evolution of Echoes takes place during the Lock arc where Koichi is sick and tired of Kobayashi's bullshit. How he's been constantly using his stand ability to exploit people's feelings and make them feel guilt. Especially when it comes to Kobayashi hurting Koichi's family as we see Koichi's will to protect them comes out in a literal and figurative sense as he comes out of his shell, showing not only everyone else but also himself that he can stand up for himself and that he can fight too. Thus appears Echo's Act 1, the physical manifestation of Koichi's fighting spirit. Or rather, just the beginning of his fighting spirit. This was just the start of Koichi's character and what he was capable of, as his stand is nowhere near its fullest potential and neither is Koichi's mental strength. As his stand ability, Echo's Act 1 was just barely what he needed in order to fight. He didn't need physical power or brute strength, he just needed the bare minimum in order to defeat his enemy. All he needed was just words to make his mother believe him, showing Koichi's passive nature, making his stand and naturally avoid physical fights. But eventually, Koichi will find himself in a situation where his words aren't enough and he needs more than just sound 
to survive. So after Koichi is kidnapped by his obsessive lover Yukako and she threatens his life, Koichi realizes that he needs more. He just needs one more attack, an attack stronger and louder than ever before, pushing his fighting spirit to its current limit. And in that moment, Echo's Act 1 drops to the floor just before it evolves, giving Koichi the impression that his stand has actually died when he himself hasn't even noticed that he is gaining a more powerful will to fight. And just when Koichi is mentally pushed to the limit, he gains a new ability, stretching and increasing his fighting spirit, which is essentially just an upgrade from Echo's Act 1, gaining the ability to make people not just hear the sound, but feel it physically. Showing that Koichi does not want to solve his problems passively anymore, but physically wants to cause someone damage. So even just at this point, we have seen Koichi on his own evolve his stand two times, both when he had no other choice but to step up and be a hero, increasing not only his ability, but his character and self-worth. Over time, and with each evolution of Echoes, we see Koichi become more confident in himself and his capabilities, becoming his own unique, interesting character and not just the scared kid who can't fight with his friends because they appear to be stronger or more experienced than him. Almost as if Koichi is the underdog in this story, and it is Koichi's story that we're following to see him grow and where he ends up. So now onto the last evolution of Echoes, or at least the last evolution that we see, Echoes Act 3. Act 3 is by far the most apparent change in Koichi's character, having his stand reflect his actual inner personality and be the most aggressive of the previous acts. Which does make sense as the moment Echoes Act 3 is summoned, Koichi is in the most important situation of the part yet, having to protect injured Jotaro from Kira's seemingly unstoppable sheer heart attack. So back to the idea that because Koichi was healed after not being able to develop a stand, being the reason for him actually developing Echoes holds true as every time Koichi's fighting spirit increases and is put in a situation which requires immense mental strength, Echoes continues to evolve. But once Echoes reaches Act 3 and Koichi is strong enough to stand on his own against a murderer, while protecting someone he looks up to and admires, this is where Koichi grows into himself and truly becomes the noble hero and badass that will be needed in order to save Morio. Just by looking at Echo's Act 3's personality, we see a bit of who Koichi wishes he could be or what Koichi really thinks inside, as his stand is a physical manifestation of his psyche. Act 3 will constantly play off Koichi's external emotions, almost like his consciousness talking to him. Like when Koichi gets some attitude from a hospital employee who calls him a short worthless brat, so he summons Echo's Act 3, who reveals what Koichi is truly thinking, and it's that he wants to kill the ho. Okay, master. Let's kill the ho! But Koichi still retains his innocent and kind facade and leaves his stand to do all this dirty talk. And at times we even see Act 3's personality traits bleed into Koichi when he seems to be acting completely out of character. It's actually just who Koichi has developed into through his various experiences and stand battles. Throughout Diamond is Unbreakable, we see the evolution of Koichi Hirose along with his stand Echoes as they grow together into the hero that Morio needed in order to save themselves from the evil that was embedded within it. From a scared high school student to a confident, strong stand user by the help of his friends and enemies that pushed him forward to become the person he needed to be. And that's the evolution of Koichi and Echoes. Koichi is probably the most interesting character in Diamond is Unbreakable when you look at his journey from start to finish and all the different trials he went through to get where he needed to be. It can almost be argued that he is the main character of part 4. I mean, he is the narrator after all. And I personally would say that he went through the most character development more so than any other character in Diamond is Unbreakable. And what was mentioned in this video about his character and who he is is really just scratching the surface of Koichi. But it's common in JoJo for any character to have lots of underlining themes and messages within their character if you look deep enough. But for now, that's the video. Leave a like if you enjoyed or if I fought your boredom, and of course subscribe for more videos. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are about Koichi and his evolution throughout part 4, but other than that, thank you all for watching.